when I reached out to our guest today, he said just, okay, on Thursday I will be there in the, your office. Like, okay. And basically that's typical with our guest. I would call him the sole person of Microtech user meetings in Europe, Jaromir Cichach. Hello. Hello. And thank nice you for you. fast coming and actually surprising us all with this. So let's jump into it. So many people, probably in European moms, know you uh, by face. <laughs> yes. <laughs> you are very active. So maybe let's go from the beginning. How did it start for you with Microtech? Oh, it's a really, really long story. And it came from, let's say, deep past. After the communists, we have to separate somehow uh, the factories which has been owned by the government. So they make a sh something like share lottery. And I was one of the people who take a care about uh, the database, communications and so on. So what year approximately are we talking about? 90 something. Okay. Yeah, closing, slowly approaching to 2000. But I was looking for the I was looking for a solution for the connection, uh, interconnection and so on. And the problem is that uh, some other competitors, let's say, uh, has a very high price. And I was looking for something with better budget. And uh, let's say the China boxes was perfect, but until you try to use it really deeply. And after that, you find a lot of problems. And also there was a way through the Linux. But the Linux was not very stable at those time. It was like the students uh, program it and when they start the work, they finish and don't continue. It was not a very stable system at those time. And um, I found a very, let's say, promising project here and a little bit walking around. And after that, I write the letter, hey, uh, I'm... Uh, your project is, so looks very good, the Microtech, so I will be one of your customers and let's start and I would like to cooperate. So this is the start. And those time, I guess the Microtech has uh, two employees, Yanis Jankovsis and I forgot the second one, sorry. I'm very sorry. I forgot. <laughs> yeah, so it was quite, quite early. So that was Rotor's version? Two dot something. Two dot three probably at that point. Yeah, I still have a backup. Really? Yeah, I can bring the, maybe if I can read the diskette, because in those time I put it on diskette. If I can take it from the diskette, I can send it to you. You can try to open it in your system. It could be pretty fun. Okay, so you met in university. So uh, by education, you are uh, mathematics or computers? No, no, no. I'm electro engineer. In those time was uh, no computer sciences, no computer education. So I have an electronic background. I'm electro engineer, basically. So... From that, you started to use Microtech a little bit more. Yes. And uh, let's say I need the system as stable as possible. So because I was working for the government, we have plenty of computers for our customers. So uh, we bought... Uh, it was a software in those times. It was not a hardware. Yeah. So I installed uh, the Microtech on plenty of computers and make a huge, huge, huge testing. And I don't want to upset uh, your staff, so I just giving uh, <laughs> some small advices like, hey, this is not very stable and this could be better. And the system improved a lot. Uh, I guess uh, there was a time like two, three years ago, the system was uh, less stable than in those times. So it, we really put it, uh, you, or you, sorry, really put it on very, very stable level and it was perfect. So basically you made sure that those features that you are using working stably by testing them separately yes. and testing. That's actually a really good guideline sorry, also in these days because uh, there's much more combination of features that somebody use, much yes. more solutions that we in the office even don't think about or can't imagine. And uh, if somebody need this particular set of features working, you, you will set up the test setup, you send us an email and we will fix it. Nothing has changed since beginning of times of Microtech. So there is a, usually a lobby around those, um, let's say, device makers uh, to aim to the government to let them buy it. And government set some condition like, okay, it has to be stable, it has to be 
uh, from friendly country and so on. And there was a problem. The microtech has no background like this. So I a little bit push things forwards uh, in my country and we make a testing. Uh, I, they asked me to make a line from some, some tunnel from somewhere to somewhere. And uh, there was a, like, uh, they call it now ethic hacking. But uh, it was, they asked some people from the, let's say, <laughs> not crime scene, some, some hackers to try to, uh, to broke this device. And I would like, because I like Microtech a lot, uh, I would like to be sure they didn't broke it. So I make all the setup and as an administrator, I remove myself. So there were no account inside they can broke or they can get so the password. So this was Microtech router without any users? Yes, exactly. So they broke nothing. No password. I'm now thinking, is it possible now? I mm. haven't tested. I haven't even thought about such, a, <laughs> such a possibility. Yeah. Have you guys tried to delete all the users from Microtech? Very interesting. <laughs> it was possible in those days. Uh, I'm not even sure if it's not possible right now because I, I have personally never tested it. <laughs> it's perfect safety future. It is actually, if we think about it. Okay, and then from that on, government start using it. Uh, yes, but of course you have to discuss with the with the other other guys and so on. That way help a lot. First uh, mom in the Prague. It was two thousand. Do you remember? Five. 2005, something like this. And uh, there was a lot of uh, guests, even for, from the government, even from those companies. And uh, they would like to see who is behind. It's not, how to say, it's very important to touch uh, the person on the opposite side and see how he think about uh, what is, uh, let's say, the culture of the company, which offers us something. As an administrator of the network, if you work government or private company, it doesn't matter. You have to be sure the equipment you put there is working and working well. And you have a support, you have a background. So because it's your name to put on it, you go to the boss and say, hey, if you buy me this equipment, everything will work. So this is very important for, so for the, IT. So the, the first mom, I'm more interested in uh, how it looked from your perspective as uh, <laughs> how, how did it get organized? Yeah. It was first mom. It was, uh, <laughs> yeah, at the first uh, the Arnis uh, came and uh, we checked some, some hotels, uh, which one is suitable or, or not. And we, uh, and he chose uh, the Hotel Duo in the, in the Prague, it's on the hill. During the winter season, where it was uh, a very, very a lot of snow and everything. Even during the mum, there was a freezing water underground. So the mum was uh, one day or two days, the hotel was without the water. Sorry for that. <laughs> and uh, yeah, some pipes broke, if I'm yes, not Yes, yes. It's, it was frozen and broke okay. because it was frozen. Yeah. Uh, the Prague is quite a hilly area, so we have high press in the, in the pipes, so it's easy broken. And uh, yeah, I give you my printer, backup printer from the company and those things just, just help you to start and that's it. And I met a lot of people there. Uh, I, uh, yeah, I met the people from the country. I think they still hold the record for longest wireless uh, line on the Microtech. Cyprus against... Uh, to mainland, yes. To, to, the, to the mainland, to the whole, on the opposite side. It's almost 300 kilometers. 300. I don't want to lie. I think 380 something was. No, no. I think just a little bit over 300. Over 300. No, not sure. So it was long time ago. <laughs> yeah, it's a long time ago. Yeah, it was on a five gigahertz connection, and you have to use the protocol end stream because the typical Wi-Fi protocol was not able to reach this destination. It's just times out. Exactly. It was interesting time when. Uh, but they did it later. I just meet those people there. Mm -hmm. And you see, in the mom, you can meet the people which can make later something else and you can get the inspiration, the problems, what they say and uh, how to solve it, their approach for it. It's amazing. Perfect source of information for me. But when, when the first mom came, you already had your own company, right? Yes. So how did that start and what are you doing actually yourself? Uh, I'm ISP provider. The small one. And how small? Oh, 
think about 10,000 customers, something like this. Okay. Yeah, maybe less. It's difficult to say because uh, sometimes I have a lot of computers and a lot of less just on one contract. You can count the contracts or you can count the computers mm -hmm. and so on. But uh, it's really approximately that size for imagination is enough. And uh, a lot of, uh, lot of uh, companies around me grow and make and becomes bigger and bigger. But I was afraid I will lose the soul of the company. So it, <laughs> yeah, uh, I'm a little bit, I don't want to say crazy, but uh, let's say I have sometimes non-typical solution of the problems. And in some moment when we have a problem with, uh, with some customers who complain and, and make us, uh, how to say, they try to eat us, yeah, to consume our resources like time, humans and so on, I decide to say them bye-bye. So I didn't grow over some, uh, some, some limit. The limit I will need uh, more staff and more everything. I'm happy with the small company. Okay, so basically, I'm uh, SP, but SP. wireless SP, right? Uh, it's half and half. Half and half. More, more wireless, more wireless, because uh, uh, as a small SP, you have to make, uh, let's say, non-typical solution. Yeah, if someone has a some, I don't know, uh, after after building the houses, there is a place and uh, opportunity to put the fiber there and so on. You have a lot of money to invest, you put the fiber and make a lot of customer. This is not my way. Mm -hmm. It's about, uh, like it's, let's say, the forester. Forester say, hey, I need the internet, I have a problem. I'm middle of the forest, no one is there. So I will find a way how to bring in the internet. Okay, maybe there's some Interesting setups that you can maybe uh, usually hardware setups. Yeah. Uh, how is the name for the house for the small birds? Bird house. Let bird like house. Yeah, yeah, you can. You are allowed to put it in the trees. Yes. So you can equip it with the Wi-Fi. <laughs> okay. Yeah. This is solution for forester from one tree to another tree to another one, and that's it. Would you like to see it? Uh, you send, will send us some photos. We will edit them. Wish. We will edit them. Put them in uh, into the video. Also, you always in uh, all the moms. You always have all, uh, at least one funny story. I, <laughs> I, I still remember your uh, wireless uh, wind testing to setup for antennas. You mean uh, which one? Like oh, wind, wind one. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but it's a little bit about taxes. Yeah. <laughs> At the beginning of the company, I had a partner, and the partner of uh, or like uh, sport car. So we have a company sport car. And the problem is the tax office came and said, hey, why you have a sport car in your company? So what you will answer? To be faster with the customer and so on. It makes no sense because there are speed limits on the street and so on. But I found in the law that if you make and or build the antenna which are allowed to do as our company to design our own antenna you have to prove the antenna wins that more than 160 km per hour so i say them okay this car is for testing antennas we can put the antenna on the roof and go legally over 160 km per hour to prove the antenna is able to win that this wind but the answer was okay no problem but where you are testing Mm, not yet, okay, so show us some testing and I count then the rent of wind tunnel is more expensive than the car by the way and we rent for half hour the racing circle in most so we have been alone with the all employees and just just one car <laughs> racing around with antenna on the roof with antenna on the roof sure. <laughs> to have a proof for the government that we really test and it worked yeah no problem <laughs> Yeah, so uh, I see you have an uh, original first uh, Microtech yep. t-shirt on. <laughs> yeah, uh, how many t-shirts do you have? A box. A box. Box. And have you counted how many moms have you attended? No. But you were, uh, wh what, what? I are? think I, I have been on the most mom as a person. I have been almost everywhere. And uh, usually I make some training with this, of course, all the continent, uh, US, Australia, uh, South America, the Brazil, let's say, oh, 
I have to say uh, sorry to people from Fia Floria Police. So, so, uh, sorry, I'm not sure about the pronunciation. They tried to introduce me for the podium and a lot of people came there and I was behind the people. I say, hey, I am here, but no one listening. Everyone was looking on the podium. So they say, oh, we didn't see Armir. Sorry, we will not show you. So <laughs> <laughs> I was behind you. Talking about mums, you know, so mm -hmm. for, for uh, three years, four years now, uh, basically it's because of uh, starting because of the COVID and then because of the chip shortage situation and so on, there have been no mums. Mm -hmm. And you already expressed a strong feeling that we need to return to the mums uh, and yes. made some points that already in this discussion, why it's important. Uh, maybe you have some other points that you want to. Oh, plenty of. Uh, usually I, you know, I came for a lot of mums. It's not about just I would like, like traveling with. It's about all continents. The people make a different solution. It's about, you know, you can introduce something, let's say here, mm -hmm. make a video and say, hey, we have a this working that way and so on. But on the mom, you can find the people who make solution different way. In the Australia, I found a guy who fly the airplane with open tail and have a network with the gravitometers to, make, to measure the gravity the field with the measure the gravity and use the use the microtech device to collect information and they found if there is a, some metal underground on the change the gravity field and he will never do presentation never show it to to all because uh, from his point of view it's a normal but for me it was like him some wow <laughs> yeah and uh, he have to investigate solution how to put microtech into the airplane yeah which is not not so easy Mm -hmm. So, uh, there is plenty of, yeah, in US I meet the guy who really, really love layer 2. He don't want to routing, but he was face of the layer 2 problems. Yeah, like um, broadcast zones. broadcasting zones and those things. And he started writing the rules, like isolate broadcast, broadcasting areas and so on. And I have like two or three hour discuss just with him and found, hey, he make by the rules complete routing on layer two. <laughs> yeah, he don't want to have a, a user layer three, but he set all the rules on layer two, but by the isolating and uh, who can uh, talk with one and uh, manipulate uh, the table with the MAC address and so on. And he, when I look at, well, it's layer three. Yeah, there is, uh, yeah, plenty of plenty. Maybe I will <clears throat> remember in the time. And uh, I, I don't want to forget anyone. Every mom, every mom, I met someone with a solution. In the Brazil, I first see the solution with the electricity. Uh, you start using it later about if you have no, uh, if you, you get electricity from the customers. So you have a house, let's say with a lot of flats, you put antenna on the top and you don't need electricity because all customers have power over Ethernet and you can feed up your device on the roof, even if just one customer is, is working. Mm -hmm. So this is the first time I saw in Brazil. Yeah. The, in, that idea might, might also originally came from, from there, from seeing that in the mom as a Microtech employee. And uh, South Africa, uh, yeah, Cape Town. Uh, we have been there and visiting uh, the guys who uh, provide the internet for the, let's say, uh, the people who make the wine. Yeah, there is a big wine areas, very, very famous, excellent wine. And uh, they have no connection in those time uh, with the city. So they put the mast on the, on, on the hills and so on. And they have uh, broken devices on the mast, no one there. And after that, they found the, the monkeys uh, destroy the devices, looks like coconuts or something like this. I, I don't know. So they destroy it. And after that, they put some uh, lubricating, lubricating on the mast and problem disappeared. So <laughs> no one in Europe will take care about this. But yeah, you, you can collect a lot of information from the mom. Uh, the Problem I see it's about uh, you have some idea how to use your device, but 
it could be used a lot of other other ways and you cannot even it's like people imagination is unbelievable and as we don't limit our feature set and you can use everything on every rotor board that the, that's amazing uh, yeah that rotor is offers that's really the question really real question is your imagination uh, how 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 can you use it but your imagination has a limit if you can reach other people which their imagination you can multiply it and that was uh, why i love the mums okay thank you uh you also one of the first microtech certified trainers right <laughs> yes i'm not sure if it's certified but one of the trainers yes okay and i make uh, it's your job now by the way uh, you make another you make a trainers right no. uh, made yeah you, you a few made years ago i still i was making trainers now caspers is oh, Kaspers responsible now. For okay so i was before you yes i know yeah uh, let's say sebastian in a car in in a germany uh, some some people in Bulgaria and so on. It was before the train the trainer program was established, and and uh, I make it and I help. So, so but you have a trainer certificate. Yeah, I got it later, and uh, I guess you ask for my certified number. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Hello, I am a trainer number zero zero seven on the micro. <laughs> yeah. But also one that should be in negatives. Yeah, because. <laughs> Minus zero zero one. <laughs> oh, <laughs> yeah. Uh, so, how many students have you trained approximately? Uh, we count it, uh, or the okay. I am not a distributor, which uh, uh, a little bit limited me because you send the information to the distributors uh, through the distributors channel. But I make cooperation with the distributor local one, one hundred mega, sto mega and uh, they sell your equipment and I came there to make a training which is a uh, perfect uh, cooperation for me they prepare room I, I make a training have a helper and everything is moving forward and they counted to, to be to be sure and it was more than 6500 <laughs> last uh, year or this year somewhere there but uh, it was uh, it started like a rocket and now it's growing slowly more mm -hmm. slowly than before so, what's your take on the uh, current uh, state of microtech training? What is good, what is bad, what, what is still needs, needs some work? <sighs> we have a proverb, the, you have to follow the rabbit if you would like to hunt him. Mm -hmm. Yes, yeah, I, I simplify it now. Uh, I think the microtech training is a nice the concept and everything is perfect but uh, the aim of the people slowly moving so we have to follow the people we have to follow the moving and also I know I don't want to be there as an advocate for the moms but it's uh, for you it's uh, the reflection back what the people really need they if someone is at the level he have to write you the letter it's too late you have to catch this feeling before okay so it can give you the time before they write to or, or choose something else or make some another solution. And uh, what I am missing uh, in the in those training is about uh, about uh, to follow the what the really people needs. Mm -hmm. And this is my modification of the training. I'm follow your rules, uh, let's say approximately. And I have a lot of uh, information from the real world, not the theoretical one, but the practical. We can we can do a lot of practice on my trainings. And uh, some examples where the people are moving currently, maybe some topics, or something. Mm, no idea. Just just no. It's it's a uh, little bit. Yeah. For example, I'm the missing. You know, I have electro engineering background. Uh, I'm missing uh, the way how to. Uh, the, the basic way. Okay, I will return, but just just uh, to mm -hmm. this, just just to explain. Uh, I love to make the basic training, to bring the people and show them the possibility of the microtic. Open their eye when you see how they open eyes. Oh, I can do this, this, this. It's amazing, and that easy way. Uh, it's like uh, sometimes I say the microtech is like a logo, uh, Lego. You, I can show you the bricks. If you make a car or castle, it's up to you. But I can show you how to. Mm -hmm. So <clears throat> I'm working that way. 
and I'm missing on the basic stuff, real, real basic stuff. I, I'm not sure if it should be included in the microtic training or not. I don't decide, but we have a training when I explain uh, how to wire the cables. Uh, by the way, the typical question is how many amps you can put through a G45 connector. Do you know it? Yeah, the limiting factor usually is the small wires and general rule. No, no, no. It's usually the gold to gold connection and it's approximately quarter amps. 0 to 25 amps. Yeah. yeah. And also they don't know that if you have a wire, the full wire is uh, defin defined by some certificate, but if you have a uh, we call it like a line, it's a lot of small wires, there is no uh, no certification rule, so that there is a problem with, with the amps. If you buy the cheap cable, uh, you have not enough electricity. But, okay, return to the microtic, it's about which power source you have to use for which distance, and if it's better to have a higher voltage or higher amperes, because uh, the power is uh, in the direct uh, current uh, system, its power is uh, multiply voltage by the amps, and you will get watts. So uh, it's about uh, those design, the power sources, and if you keep eye on it, uh, your devices can work really, really long time. Of course, we have some, some, uh, some. We found some type which has not good plastic on uh, on uh, on the sun and is destroyed sooner. But typical lifetime. What I'm aiming, I'm aiming about to have not too much employees. I would, I'm happy with my small group of the technic and the secretary and so on, and it works, and I'm so happy about them. Thank you. And uh, <laughs> yeah, and uh, I need uh, to have a. How to say, when I install it, I don't need to touch it until the device is too old. Not because of uh, the condensator are dry and so on. It's because it's too old from the low, old protocols, not enough computing power and so on, which is typical somewhere around five years. So I'm happy when I have installation, I cannot touch for five years. Mm -hmm. So when I install it, five years no touch. If I have to touch it sooner, there is a problem. Okay. So, let's maybe then uh, discuss a little bit of hardware. What's your favorite Microtech hardware? Wow. <laughs> <laughs> Lot of. <No. laughs> Depends about what I'm, I would like to do with. But uh, for now, I uh, discover a little bit Knot. Knot is correct pronunciation yes. for it? Yes. yes. I discover a Knot because uh, it uh, can give me uh, the protocol for automatization. Uh, the well, what's the name of the protocol? Lor? No, no, no. It's a serial uh, RS four hundred eighty five, but mm -hmm. has a very special name. Sorry, Redfish memory. Mm -hmm. Yeah. You basically use that direct input? Modbus, sorry. Modbus, yeah. Okay. Yeah, the Modbus with, with the IP, so I can convert Modbus into the IP and centrally get uh, plenty of information. Maybe the, you have some hardware that we miss? What, what hardware Microtech is not producing and ne need to produce as soon as possible? <laughs> power source, but real, real power source. Uh, with the middle age, uh, there is uh, uh, hours, the middle age hours into the into the problems, into the uh, you know what I mean, the typical lifetime, let's say, mm -hmm. designed for typical lifetime, one hundred years. <laughs> yeah, I'm not joking. For the backbone, we are using the military radios, uh, which are you not produced on high frequencies and separate frequencies and so on. And they have a typical lifetime or design lifetime, 100 years, which is amazing because uh, they have to think about the lightning, electricity problem and everything. And if you will have a power source like this one, it could be great because uh, now I buy the power sources someone else with this typical lifetime because uh, I found after the storm and the storm are worse and worse if you can, can feel it. 
uh, the electricity could be hit by the lightning and so on. So there is uh, over voltage and a lot of those problems. Mm -hmm. And when I use your original power sources, it's about I have to uh, I have to go and replace them after every storm. So I redesign it, as I said, electro engineer. We redesign it for another power source, and after that, it's okay. Five years have to be designed to really live instead five years, which means it's designed for one hundred years, and everything is perfect. Okay, interesting. Okay, anything else from hardware point of view? Wireless. Wireless. Definitely wireless, faster wireless. Okay, uh, from the hardware point of view, I would like to, the device I'm missing, let's say the typical scenario, fiber to the building, and but people would like to use Wi-Fi in the house. Very typical. And we bring, let's say, one gigabit to the house. They take the phone, connect the micro tick and, and start the speed test. And I would like to have a device which show one gigabit on the phone, mm -hmm. on the speed test. Well, currently it's about 800 to 900 megabits on... Uh, can, you, can you show me? On, on speed test? One, on, yeah, on HAP AX3, yes. I would like to see it. We never reached that point. Oh, uh, yeah, okay. Yeah, I, I really would like to see it. But it's, it doesn't have optical line. In, it has only Ethernet as a device. Okay, understood. Thank you. Because the customer asks you, hey, you sell me one gigabit, show me. Is it a uh, passive optical line or active optical line? Jipon uh, or...? Uh, can be both of them. Okay. But uh, yes, we, in part of the network we are using a Jipon, but on some network we make investments and have it uh, point to point. How many Ethernet ports? Oh, the typical five, six, seven, up to ten, it's perfect. Okay. Usually the design is about uh, if they, have, they need more ports, they have a cameras, they have those things. And if they have a camera, they have to use 48 volt uh, PoE. So we use the separate switch just for the camera and I need just one Ethernet from the Microtech for all cameras. So cameras, uh, video recorder for them. Let's cameras say. probably need PoE out? No, no, because they have their own 48 volts PoE. Okay. So if you have a central house switch, the typical, uh, the cameras, uh, yeah, uh, the video recorder, uh, let's say some local cloud for the house, uh, intelligent system for the do something, one backup, and local network. Maybe TV separate, maybe children room, up to 10. Okay, I will take, take a note on that. Uh, also, I, I, I recently found out that you also have a YouTube channel. Oh, yeah. <laughs> and uh, there's some funny videos, non-typical videos there. For example, drop testing of the rotor board. <laughs> yes. <laughs> it was like advertisement for my trainings. Okay. And uh, yeah, and we do a lot of fun with this. You say, uh, the question is, uh, how, uh, what is the altitude the rotor board survive when it's dropped down? The typical test is one meter, two meters, three meters. So, mm. not enough for me, zero, zero, 007. I take an airplane, fly the up and drop it down. So the video is on the YouTube and you can check it how it's seen. And the typical was, okay, I dropped the rotor board from the airplane, came to my training and we will put in electricity and we will see if it's work or not. <laughs> the same when we have, a, I think, second or third Prague mom. Uh, we, <clears throat> I arranged to meeting with the tanks and uh, those things. And we have been uh, learning how to drive the tanks and so on with, uh, with the microtic trainers and stuff and so on. And uh, we put a lot of rotor boards in the row and drive the tank over it. Yeah, uh, there was a, I still remember the Valens. The Valens said, yes, please, please, please. Uh, record uh, the number of, uh, uh, yeah, the serial number of this device because if I will show it in Asia, they will not believe me, it's the same. <laughs> I, I need this serial number recorded. So, 
he recorded and in Indonesia, mom, I have been nearby, we put it in electricity. Yeah, and maybe it works. I, I don't remember now. It doesn't <laughs> matter, but the people are curious, is it work even? The normal plastic road, oh, by the way, the metal one didn't survive, but the plastic one, yes. The normal microtech device like this one, just put it on the floor and tank drive on it. It was a grass soft rose. So, uh, dropping uh, rotor boards from the plane, uh, you also made some jokes with Microtech also. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, uh, you know the Microtech from some time I started asking for the photo on the training and the faces, to mark the faces, who is who. And I was really looking forward if someone check it, <laughs> if check it or not. <clears throat> so, uh, there was uh, some Disney make some movie in, in the Prague and I asked them uh, if I can rent a costume. <laughs> so I rent the costume and put the guy inside, make the training, uh, make the final photo and send it to Microtech. I can really confirm that Microtech check those photos because uh, I got the answer <laughs> very, very soon. And yes, I declare I'm the first one trainer who certified Mickey Mouse on MTCNA. <laughs> you can find uh, the certified even now on the Microtech page. And uh, we make a lot of, lot of fun with it. Please uh, don't do it again. <laughs> it's yeah, uh, it's not like we don't have a sense of humor. Sometimes we just went uh, through, through it. But yeah, uh, that, that's it. Maybe you have any other interesting setups that you want to mention? Uh, the one that with Boeing? Oh yes, uh, it's not uh, not set up. It's I met the guy on the on the mum. <laughs> Looks like this uh, speech will be <laughs> around the mum, but uh, I got a lot of information on the mum. So I met the guy I think from the Norway, who has been working for the Boeing, and he put the Microtech uh, into the into the Bo no sorry Airbus. I'm mm -hmm. sorry Airbus. And he put the microtech in Airbus for the entertainment system to distribute uh, to distribute the data on on the airplane. There's I don't know how he did it, but we spoke. He don't want to do presentation about this, but we spoke about this. So it potentially that all the maybe it's there, maybe not. I don't know. Mm -hmm. But uh, even the idea, it's great. Why not? All the features are there. So yes, exactly. Should shouldn't be any problem. Okay, so uh, anything else? Yeah, I'm the first one in the world. I'm driving an electric unicycle now, which I love <laughs> it because it <laughs> can go almost everywhere, like on the bike and so on. And you can put it uh, on the front of your airplane and fly somewhere. And from the airfield, which is usually not in the city, you can go to the city and back. And because I'm flying and I uh, love uh, driving a unicycle, I'm the first one in the world who catch the airplane on unicycle. So you can also see it and found it on, on my YouTube. Okay, about... we will put the YouTube link uh, to the Yaromir's <laughs> YouTube channel. So let's get him mu much more subscribers. Oh, not necessary. <laughs> I just uh, use it as, as a memory of my life. <laughs> and those, uh, because uh, we make a lot of crazy things. So uh, it's like my book yeah. of the pictures, but the movies is better than picture. Yeah, if I have to use one word to describe you, it's maybe not crazy, but it's close. It's extravagant. No. Yes. Yes, it is. <laughs> okay. I'm normal. Everyone else is. <laughs> <laughs> so, but uh, I also, following your channel, I know that you have uh, not only Microtik, but also other hobbies. Do you yes. want to share some hobbies that you are doing? <laughs> uh, you mean uh, the flying aerobatics? No, one of, yes. <laughs> one of, yes. Okay. I'm flying the aerobatic uh, because it's extremely relaxed for me. Uh, you know, if you're typing something and do something and you are really focused, you have to go to vacation to relax. And I found when I'm flying, uh, uh, it's like two hours of flying, it's like one week vacation. Yeah, because for your mind, it's absolutely refreshed. But uh, as uh, 
it's uh, like uh, using the drugs. You need more, more, more. So after that, I started flying the aerobatic. And when I started flying aerobatic, after that, I started flying competitions and so on. Uh, now I'm a Czech team leader for category advance. Uh, when we go somewhere, I'm a team manager, let's say, and uh, uh, help uh, the others to prepare themselves. We got uh, on European championship on in advanced category as a team. Uh, we got the bronze medal, and uh, yeah, and now let's say I will be not far away from the truth if I say I'm between, let's say top 100, maybe top 50 aerobatic pilot in the world. So, as soon as you find something that you like, you go just full in. Yes, that way. So, at, at one point it was Microtics? Definitely. Yeah. <clears throat> you know, uh, I love when the people do their job well, or perfectly. You know, if someone is a cleaner, it's a not bad job. When he knows how to do it, and do it precisely, perfectly, I, I can watch it and say, wow, that's amazing. Mm -hmm. If someone paints something, I see the painter and wow. Uh, for me, the professionality is it's very, very amazing point. And uh, this professionality I see when the microtics start at the beginning. Now I'm a little bit not uh, in the contact, in the touch with the teams uh, again, because new people and so on. But this professionality, like when we testing, I write to the email, something is not work. I'm written in those uh, first times and I get the next day answer. Yes, thank you. We fix it. Yeah, I, so, I was I, at that point, at that point, like 15 years ago. Yeah, I was I was the one that also replied. Oh, it was <laughs> OK. Yaromir that. wrote, OK, let's take it serious. <laughs> let's check it out. Yeah, uh, but uh, bottom line is, yeah. Uh, for some people, the bug, the feature that doesn't work is obvious. But uh, in the office here, we don't see it until somebody writes us an email yeah. and explains yeah. to us, I mean, this setup, this doesn't work it as it should, and so on. So just to encourage everyone, to, if you see that something is not working as expected, just write to, to support, we'll see what we can do. Of course, as Jeremy told, that since... Uh, early, no, late 1990-something, mm -hmm. uh, Microtech has grown significantly. Uh, everyone has, uh, their role changed over the years. I already need very really hard to think about what I did here in Microtech in my 20 years uh, of service, like starting from preparing to RB230s for the shipment. Yeah, it was, Man. by the way, it was an amazing device. Yeah. Uh, you can put the hard drive inside and uh, have a photos from your uh, vacation or something, <laughs> using it as a backup. <laughs> yeah, so I still remember when somebody, somebody crazy ordered like 300 of them. And I spent three weeks preparing each one by one by hand. It was one of the first tasks <laughs> that stay with me. <laughs> yeah. Um, and uh, yeah, right now, like doing podcasts uh, and also uh, involving a lot in the hardware testing. So to make sure that our hardware survives uh, the fall from the plane. Thank you. <laughs> to be overtaken by the tank. To be overtaken by the tank and other funny, funny things that we can do with our hardware. Uh, so... Maybe you have any discussion topic that you would like to ask us as a microtic? No. <laughs> uh, not sure where are you aiming to, but maybe you can you can cut it and put it at the end. We will see. Uh, I would like to see the microtic soul again. I would like to see the soul. The people are aim and they love their products. It's not just to go to the job and earn the money. It's about to, you have a beautiful product and you have to be behind him. You have to put him forward. So please work on, on your device with the heart. And uh, let's say you bring, uh, you bring very non-typical solution and you can make, uh, let's say, people's imagination has a no borders. There yeah. is no limits. So... <clears throat> let it go forward. And of course, we are looking for, especially me, looking for faster radios, more stable, 
and uh, so on so on because there are new chipset let's implement them and work that way but what i really would like to see it's people behind they are really focused on their product and put it forward not just going to earn the money into the job okay so that also includes more exposure to the customer physical exposure right definitely because if you will not <laughs> if you will not meet the customer you will in insulate yourself you will make like self group you need an interaction with them and uh, you know if you have non-happy customer first time he is non-happy inside after that he say hey I'm not happy and after that he wrote you I'm not happy if you catch it at the time uh, he's so unhappy to wrote you to write a letter or something it's too late if okay. you catch him at the beginning and say mm, I'm a little bit not happy Sometimes is just stupid things which can be fixed very easy. So if you fix those small things very easy, you will have a happy customer at the moment. Okay, uh, I don't know if you have noticed in your job, but at least here in Latvia, uh, when we are looking for new employees for Microtik, you can really see that uh, the new generation has changed uh, with different values. So they are maybe not socializing so much don't mm -hmm. prioritize socializing physically with each other, but uh, online communication is much more important, like forums, discords, uh, also, also reddits, uh, and so on. So uh, don't you see that uh, what we are currently also developing that direction? Okay, uh, first I will give you a short story. Okay. And uh, let's continue. Uh, of course, when we, uh, when as an ISP, sometimes <coughs> uh, someone tried to hack my network. And uh, when they try to hack the network, the moment I really, really love is when I ring doorbell on their own door. <laughs> so I step out from the virtuality to the physical one. And it's a big surprise for those people. After that, you see the people who try to attack you all the night big king on the social network when you ring the bell and open the door oh sorry you will see some some small guy inside yeah like uh, yeah of course uh, don't speak about the hacker scene it's professionalized now and so on but uh yeah the generation change that's true and change a lot uh you know as a czech republic i'm from the czech republic you know uh, we have been very, very, uh, we have a lot of factories. We have been very, very focused on the techniques. And <clears throat> almost all family has a, has a corner with some uh, drill machines and they do uh, by themselves their things. And usually the father work with the son. So the son has a good habits about how to drill a hole, uh, a hole. Uh, how to, uh, I don't know, design something, make something, on how to use a hammer and those things. And it's a practical, it's a practical moment when they learn about uh, the technical, to give, get the background. And after that, of course, they came to the school and so on. But the basic, the basic came from this generation exchange. And there is a problem, the generation, the people live longer. The typical lifetime was uh, educate from your father, Go to the school, go to the work, educate your children, and that's it. It was uh, typical. Now it's it's changed. It's it's a, it's a longer. It's uh, it's uh, it's a different, and the connection between uh, between the you know, between the children and the father and connection there it's a little bit broken because they escape into the virtuality. If you play the computer games, let's say. And if you would like to make uh, the copper, or sorry, if you would like to make a bronze, you use your statue, put the copper, put the tin. You say, ah, simple, perfect. Try it in real world. <laughs> Hit the tin. Hit the, you can do it. You can smell the bronze in your garage if you wish. It's not a problem, but it's much different than just do it virtually. Mm -hmm. So if you are missing those real practical things, you know, on the mums, uh, usually when I on the mums, I attend a training or so on, or I offer my help to local company, which is amazing. So we have been uh, in India, in uh, Bombay, we have been building uh, the must install the devices. 
And <clears throat> if you would like to understand the country, work with them, even for free, for a few days. So I have been like freelancer for free for them near the mum and uh, help them to build those things, which give me a lot of information again, how they work, what, what they use and so on. So it really helps. But if you separate yourself into the virtual space, you will never make a bronze again. Okay. Okay, I got your metaphor. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> so, uh, basically it's safe to say that with all the travels to the mum, you kind of got like a global view on the things related to IT, maybe to Microtech. And what's it, maybe you have some, some, some bottom line that you have concluded after all these mom travels and uh, what is that like main, main emphasis, a uh, main idea that you have reached after all these travels and working with many people and seeing many <coughs> setups. If you are looking for some smart final words, I have no doubt. <laughs> it's uh, too, many, too many things and uh, you know, the life is beautiful. And it's beautiful because uh, you can decide to go left, right, up, down. And it's your decision and uh, it's, for me it's not about earning the money. <clears throat> it's about the collecting uh, the information, the knowledge to, to understand the things, how they work. And <clears throat> if you are on the AT field, the mum usually concentrate the people who are focused on the same product or focus on the networking, which I love, and those things. It's, uh, you know, it's uh, the one big feeling is uh, like combination of a lot of small feelings. Uh, you need, uh, you know, to see, to discuss, not just to see uh, the Brian Var Vargas, mm -hmm. Var Var to see the Brian's. Okay. He made the project to make Wi-Fi call inside the running train near Chicago. He uh, put uh, the antennas on the masts, make the wireless line and switch from one line to another one. The, the quality good enough to you have a voice call inside the train. He put the microtech on the roof under high voltage and he has to be winced to uh, a lot of technical problems that he has to solve. Of course, the electricity, high current from the train and so on, and he solved it. So meet those people. Mm -hmm. uh, Valence, Indonesia, definitely. Valence <laughs> is uh, it's with his staff. It's amazing, amazing example of uh, innovation and, and those things. And I forgot a lot of people there, let's say, almost on every mom, you find someone who is uh, very, let's say, shining, shining with the information and it's, it's like light in the dark. It's, uh, you see the, the Valence design, uh, how he uh, built his network. And when you speak with those people, look how they work, it's very inspirative for me. Okay. So, uh, here you are. Uh, I hope that this interview allow you to get a glimpse of why <laughs> Jaromir is, is basically soul of Microtech <gasps> user meetings. Yeah, why he has this huge role about getting everyone together. Uh, everyone who meets him always sticks to him and wants to return to visit, uh, including myself. And uh, so very big thank you for being part of community. Microtech wouldn't be the Microtech without you. Oh. <coughs> <laughs> and it's interaction between all, the, all those people. Do you remember the Prague mom when everyone sitting at the hotel after the training? Uh, maybe. Yeah, it was uh, the NG hotel or something. And when I found it's typical after the training, the people stay at the place, don't go everywhere. But in the middle of the Prague, it's a fairy tale city. Mm -hmm. uh, we have a king, princess and all of those things up to now. So I, uh, because I already <laughs> know almost everyone. So I meet all the trainers in the rooms and say, hey, uh, you are sitting in the bar, you do nothing. So if you would like to, when you finish, 4 o'clock, okay. 4.30 front of the hotel and we will go to the city with me. And I start with the full train of the people. <laughs> train. <coughs> five, uh, uh, five of those... Uh, Car cards. Cards, thank you. 
five of those cars full of the microtech people. We start, I don't know, 200, 300 people, something like that. Everyone would like to go and finish 4 a.m. with the last two. We had to... We, or something. we actually <laughs> had to leave as a Microtech employees. We had to leave early because the next day was Microtech mom <laughs> and we needed to get this seven o'clock morning wake up. But yeah, uh, th those are the stories of, uh, of Microtech mom. So thank you again for surprise visit. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you know me, just jump and go. Yeah, it's very n not typical in modern days. Everyone just goes online. Yeah. As you can see, Riaromir uh, uh, is much person-in-person -person, uh, uh, communication preference. So, yeah, I hope uh, this gave you a glimpse uh, of why it's he is so important person for us and why should Microtech user meetings uh, return. And please leave your comments if you think the same and give your examples and discussion why we should return to the Microtech user meetings. Thank you very much. Thank you very much.